Hello everybody and welcome to the College Planning for Juniors presentation. I am Dan Doherty, the Director of School Counseling, and I will be leading off this presentation with you today. Uh, while we certainly wish we could be together in person, um, we obviously can't due to health reasons, but uh, we wanted to still be able to provide you with an opportunity to get some great information as you start to do your college planning process for after your senior year. What we want to let everybody know is no matter what you do, no matter where you go, we are hoping that you are going to prepare yourself for whatever it is you want to do for the rest of your life as a career. And no matter what pathway you decide to choose, we want you to know that there are so many different pathways out there. If you choose to do certification programs or apprenticeships, such as electrical or plumbing, if you want to go to a technical school like Lincoln Tech and learn how to do mechanics on trucks and diesel vehicles, if you want to go earn your associate's degree at a two-year college, uh, and then potentially transfer to another four-year college. There are so many different options. Or if you just want to start out at a four-year college or university and earn your bachelorate, that is also an option for you as well. Here's what we want to express. Before you begin the college search, the one thing you have to think about is finding the right fit. You shouldn't go to IU just because they're having a heck of a football season this year. And you shouldn't go to Purdue because that's where your best friend goes. Or you shouldn't go to Butler just because mom or dad was in a fraternity or a sorority there. You need to go to a place that works for you, financially, socially, and academically. Now, what are some of the ways that we can figure out how to find the right fit? <clears throat> well, this year is certainly different um, because the traditional college visits aren't necessarily uh, widespread across the board, there are some schools that will still offer in-person college visits and presentations, but you want to check that out uh, to make sure that that is still an option. Most schools are actually offering virtual college fairs, and you can join those by either going to their websites and finding out how you can participate, or you can sign up for any of the virtual college visits that we have through our uh, school here with Naviance. We also have the academic fit in Naviance scattergrams, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the first thing I want to talk about is the Naviance Supermatch. This tool is available to you right now. Every one of you, parents and students, have the ability to log into your Naviance account to figure out uh, and to utilize the tools to help you in your college and your career search. So one of the biggest questions we get is, Mr. Doherty, I have no idea where uh, I need to start. Um, I know that I want to go to a college, but I have no idea how to get there. Um, what, how do I figure out what school is best for me? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the Supermatch tool. The Supermatch tool can be found in the Colleges uh, tab within your Naviance account. Uh, there you are going to indicate what things are important to you in the whole college search process. So is location important? Are your academics important? Are your, uh, is the cost important? Is what you can do on campus important? What kind of groups do you want to be involved in? You can indicate all of those things. And out of those 4,000 schools that we have available, it will shrink them down and show you by percentage how many of those schools line up with what you are trying to get into. Once you find those schools that meet your match or meet the highest percentage of your match, you can book those, bookmark those schools into your colleges I'm thinking about. Now let's talk about finding the right fit academically. Within those different schools, you can start to unpeel the, that information in Naviance like an onion. You can find out everything about what they do on campus. You can find out their academics. You can compare yourself to Westfield High School students going all the way back to 2006 in terms of admission requirements. So be sure to check that out. And then also, this is kind of what I call the velvet hammer, and this is using scattergrams. Um, if you have a 2.7 GPA and you really plan to go to IU, um, chances of your admission are going to be slimmer than not. Um, 
what this will allow you to do is see yourself compared to, again, all of the Westfield High School graduates going back to 2006 who have applied to Indiana University. You are going to be represented um, by the little blue dot. All the green check marks are students who have been admitted based on their GPA and test scores. And all the red X's are students who have been denied admission to those individual schools. You can check this out for any school that you are wanting to apply to that we have data for. Now, where you fall based in this scattergram will help you get a better idea as to whether or not you may or may not be admitted into a particular school. If you're closer to the green check marks, your chances are better. If you're closer to red X's, you might be on the outside looking in. The other thing you have to consider though is there are so many different changes to the college admission process with the whole COVID-19 component that uh, admit college admission is down just a little bit. So your chances of getting in if you're a little lower in terms of GPA and test scores might be a little bit better than it has been in years past. Finally, we also want to make sure that you are looking at um, the admission requirements for the schools that you're looking at. Make sure that you are looking at the appropriate amount of English credits and math credits and science credits and social studies credits and, and uh, what particular classes maybe they might have. Some schools will require a foreign language of at least two years, some will not. So make sure that you are looking to see what kind of admission requirements are required for the schools that you are considering. And then, once you have listed those schools as bookmarks within Naviance, you will be able to see this whole dashboard which will help you prepare for the college application process. On the left, you will see the schools. There, you'll be able to uh, indicate or identify how you will apply for those schools. If it is a blue computer with nothing in the middle of it, that is a school that you will apply to via their website. If it is a school with a CA within the blue computer, that is a school where you can apply via the Common App. There are a few schools that will allow you to choose either the website or the Common App, but if it does have a CA in there, they are a Common App school. We'll talk a little bit more about Common App a little later in the presentation. The other thing I want to make sure you take note of is uh, the application deadlines. While most early application deadlines are November 1st, um, there are some that are a little bit later than that, but no college has an application deadline prior to November 1st. Okay. Action items for your junior year. Consider possible career paths. When you tell your teachers or your counselor possible things you're considering for the future, that helps us give you great suggestions on classes to take. Take both the SAT and the ACT this year if, you, if it's possible. Um, it's best actually to take those tests after you've completed Algebra 2 since that is the highest level math that the SAT and the ACT will be testing you on. If you're able, visit college campuses in person, um, but most colleges will have campus visits virtually right now. Update your high school resume with new activities and awards. This will just give you a jump start on what you will have to add to your college applications next year. We have created a college planning website for you guys. On the website, you will find presentations that tell you about finding the right fit and how to most prepare for college, financial aid and scholarships, military options in higher education, college athletics and academic eligibility. If you are thinking of playing NAIA, NCAA, Divisions 1, 2, or 3, you must make sure that you are academically eligible for those institutions. Earning college credits in high school, um, taking a closer look at AP and dual credit opportunities, Many of you have already taken those classes, so see how they might transfer into your future college. And finally, college entrance exams, demystifying the SAT and the ACT. Making the most out of your college visits. Again, we're all in a crazy time right now, and it might be difficult to actually visit your college in person. 
However, colleges have worked really hard to make sure they make the best out of a virtual visit. So they can be scheduled if they're doing in-person visits on the college's admission um, page or th by calling their admission office. Take, take a tour, meet with an admission counselor, visit a class or meet with a professor. All of those things really get you to understand if you can see yourself on that college campus. If possible, visit when classes are in session so you can truly see all of the students who attend that college. And do some research prior to your visit and ask questions. Again, obviously many colleges have COVID restrictions in place right now, so just make sure you look at their website or give their office a call to understand their policies. Want to get ahead on your college application process? Consider attending our summer college admission workshop. This year, it'll be a two-day workshop, June 7th and 8th. Um, and it's a small group working seminar type workshop for approximately 35 students. Uh, during the workshop, you will develop a resume, um, which you can use for your college applications, any scholarship applications, um, or to give to your recommenders, including your counselor, if they have to write a letter of recommendation for you. Uh, you'll receive in-depth training of the college admission process, um, advice from college admission personnel. Um, in the past, we have had um, admission professionals from Georgetown, from Butler University, Hanover College. Um, so great, great advice from people who are in the college. Uh, you'll also get great interview practice and coaching from local um, community members who work in a variety of different areas. Uh, you will develop an admission essay within the workshop. Uh, the fee is $100 for the two-day workshop and there are fee waivers for students who meet the income guidelines. The SAT and the ACT, what are they? Why are they important? <clears throat> These tests have been used by college admission offices um, during the admission process for years. Now, at the current time, many have gone test optional, um, but we will discuss that later. So the SAT and ACT are used in conjunction with high school achievement, um, can be used by a college to determine your success uh, in their school. They use it as a measuring stick for students who come from a variety of different high schools. Since many high schools grade differently, have different grading scales, 4.0, 5.0, 10 point scales, even 12 point, um, the SAT and ACT is typically one way that a college can determine and measure student A and student B equally. Um, often those scores are used as part of merit-based scholarship determination. How do I take the SAT and the ACT? Students must register online for these tests. You will register for the SAT at collegeboard.org and for the ACT at ACT.org. Students should really take both tests to understand which tests might be best for them and give you the greatest admission opportunity. Um, colleges will accept either test, um, and most colleges will use whichever score from the SAT or the ACT is highest in determining um, your admission decision. You will wanna make sure you send your scores to the colleges upon registration. So when you're registering for the SAT or the ACT, you get four free score sends when registering. So make sure you input any colleges you're considering applying to uh, so that they, those colleges will receive your scores. Even if the school is test optional, I would go ahead and just send those free four score sends anyway. If you have to send them to your schools after you take the test, then it will be about, <clears throat> excuse me, $13 per college to send those scores later. Again, if a school is test optional, like IU Bloomington is or Ball State, be sure to read their policy and understand what option might be best for you. 
Again, the websites for each of those tests and where you can find out more information is listed there. And fee, waiver, fee waivers are available for students who meet financial eligibility. You can see in this chart the upcoming SAT um, test administrations. So the SAT offers seven throughout um, a calendar year. Um, and you can see that we've got several coming up. Um, typically spring, that March date, is a really popular test date for juniors. And then most definitely that June 5th test date in 2021 is popular since we host that at the high school. Uh, make sure you're looking at the registration deadlines and any late fees associated if you do not hit those deadlines. Avoid the late fees and just register on time. Here are the upcoming ACT test administrations. You can see in 2020, at the end of 2020, they added a bunch of dates that they don't normally have. Again, just to provide more access, access since many students were not able to take the um, ACT or the SAT for that fact in the spring. Um, so the March date on there is a special ACT test administration that we give to juniors only at WHS. Um, so information has already been sent out about that test date by Mrs. Olsis. So I would highly, highly consider registering for that test. If you don't want to give up your um, school day to take that ACT, you most definitely can sign up for one of the other test dates at actstudent.org. Um, the fee is around $55, and if you do it with the essay, it's $70. Again, there are most definitely fee waivers for students who apply. Preparing for the SAT and ACT. There are many, many free online test materials on both the SAT and the ACT websites. Um, of course, there's an app for that as well. Uh, daily practice for the new SAT by the College Board and then ACT prep, practice tests, flashcards, quizzes by varsity tutors. Those are both great apps that you can download to get free test prep. Um, practice tests can also be found on both the ACT and the College Board websites. Again, doing those practice tests is typically the best um, preparation for the SAT and the ACT. We also offer the College Entrance Prep class um, only to juniors. So if you're able to get into that for third trimester and you think that would be helpful, um, you want to talk to your counselor now about that. Um, but if not, there's most definitely one offered through Indiana Online that you can do this summer. Preparing for the SAT with the Khan Academy. Many of you have already taken the PSAT um, at least once, hopefully twice, um, or even three times. Um, and that, um, in conjunction with Khan Academy, your PSAT results in, con in conjunction with Khan Ac Academy, can be a great SAT prep. Um, again, it's a free online SAT prep, um, and they will essentially use your PSAT results to um, make a study plan for you, um, which will include interactive problems, video lessons, full-length practice tests, personalized study plan, like I mentioned, um, and instant uh, feedback on your essay. You can learn more about this um, when you link to your College Board and Khan Academy at the, that address. Um, studies have shown that students who put in um, some time um, studying and prepping for their next SAT or from the PSAT to the SAT can improve their score by up to 115 points. Building or updating your resume. As I mentioned earlier, it's important that you have a resume of activities or work experience or awards that you have received throughout high school. Many colleges will ask for an activities resume, and so this is what it's going to include. Your objective and goals, your education that you will be receiving, which would include the diploma or diplomas you're working on here at Westfield, um, again, any awards, honors, recognition, leadership experience, that's really important, um, especially for a scholarship application. Colleges want to know not only what all you're involved in, 
um, but how you've taken on leadership roles within those organizations. And it's not about quantity, it's more about quality. Um, and most definitely work experience. We know that many of you have taken on more hours at your part-time job um, because of our hybrid schedule. And so if you're able to show that you were able to balance your academics and a part-time work um, or more than part-time hours, that really shows a lot about you and how you will be successful in your future college career. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about ways that you can prepare for your senior year. There are actually a lot of things that you can be doing now to make sure that you are ready for what's to come. So one of the first things that you can do is take a look at the college admission requirements. Mr. Doherty talked a little bit about that earlier and how you can see that in Naviance. You can also see college admission requirements on the college admission websites. So if there's a class that maybe you need to take in your senior year, something that you need to add to your schedule, take a look at that now so you can prepare ahead. For instance, did you know that to be an engineering major at Purdue, you have to have chemistry in high school? Also, if you're looking at Indiana University Bloomington, you have to have at least one semester of pre-calculus. So make sure that you know what the college admission requirements are and that you've got those courses built into your schedule. Next, plan to take a challenging senior year. This is not the time for you to take a really easy um, senior year. It's not the time to just skate through. First off, you want to make sure that you have a rigorous schedule because again, colleges are looking at that and they want to make sure that you're taking all the good courses to be prepared. Secondly, the more courses that you can take here, the better prepared you're going to be when you're in college. So your senior year might be a little bit harder here, but it's going to make your life easier once you get to college. Next, consider doing some job shadowing or some internships so you can learn a little bit more about your career path. There are a lot of opportunities here at Westfield for you to get out of the building and get into different career opportunities to learn more about them. So maybe again, it's taking a course like our EMS or our CNA courses, or maybe it's doing a career externship in a law office or at a physical therapy office. You can really get out and learn a lot about your future careers by getting into those opportunities. Next, take a look at um, some maybe different kinds of requirements that you might have. For instance, if you are thinking about NCAA or NAIA eligibility, you've got to make sure that you're getting in all those courses, again, to be academically eligible for that. Or do you have a specific major that's going to require a portfolio or an audition? So maybe you're an architecture major, or maybe you're looking at music performance and you've got to have some additional things outside of that typical admission application. Double check those things. Again, be prepared for what's coming ahead. Now, as you're looking at your junior year, so we're about halfway through your junior year, it's crazy to think that already. Think about um, how you're doing. Think about um, academically, are you doing your best? So when you apply to colleges in the fall, your junior year is typically the last thing that they're gonna see on your transcripts when you're going through that admission process. So you wanna make sure that you are making a really good final impression. Now I know that this year has been difficult to say the least, it's been unusual with our hybrid schedule, but make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. And that means doing your work, studying, making sure that every little bit counts. So again, make a good final impression. Now one thing to keep in mind, a lot of students ask about their GPA and how they can fix it. Well, keep in mind that the further you get towards graduation, the more challenging it is to change your GPA substantially. Now you can absolutely make those steps incrementally as you go, but the more credits you've already earned, the harder it is to change your GPA substantially. But like I said, every little bit counts. And again, make sure that you are um, scheduling a good senior year. And remember that your senior year grades do count. So even though you're applying for admission in your senior year, and they're only looking at your junior year grades, colleges will get a final transcript after you've graduated. And they're gonna see everything that you've done in that senior year. And if you've slacked off a little bit, or maybe you just haven't really put, again, your best foot forward, they're gonna see that. And they can make changes to their admission decisions. It's not very common, but it can happen. So um, if you are failing a lot of classes or just not doing what you need to be doing, colleges can change their minds. So again, make sure that you're putting in all the work and effort in your senior year. 
And remember, it's your responsibility to make sure that you're meeting admission requirements with all of your classes, test scores, uh, letters of recommendation, all those kinds of things. So make sure that you're checking out the college websites and that you've got everything down and in place to meet those admission requirements. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is another resource for you. And you're going to be able to find this on our College Planning for Juniors website. So the College Application Book. It's about 70 pages long. It's got a lot of information in it. Now, we don't necessarily expect you to read it cover to cover. That's not what it's made for. But it's made for you to be a good resource for you. So maybe you need to see what um, a resume looks like, and you need an example of that. Or maybe you just want to see, what kind of questions should I ask an admission counselor when I go on a visit? You're going to find all of that in the college admission book or college application book, I'm sorry. One thing that you'll also find is some recent college admission statistics from Westfield High School students. So you can see kind of our most common colleges that students apply to, how many Westfield students uh, applied, how many were accepted, and then how many enrolled. And you're gonna be able to see kind of those average SATs, ACTs, and GPAs. So there's some good statistics for you to look at there as well. Now again, some more information on senior year and what to expect. At the start of your senior year, you should consider retaking an SAT or an ACT, either one, for maximum admission and scholarship opportunities. Now, I always tell students, your senior year SAT or ACT should never be the first time that you're taking it. You should most definitely be taking that SAT or ACT sometime in your junior year. The one in the fall of your senior year should really be just to try to hit maybe the next scholarship level for a college, or maybe you're trying to reach direct admission of a specific school, and you're just trying to nudge those scores up a little bit. That's when you want to take those. So make sure that you're taking the SAT or ACT again sometime in August, September, or October so that you're meeting the admission deadlines with those. Next, submit all application materials in a timely manner. It is up to you to make sure that you're meeting all admission deadlines and that you've got all of the application materials in on time. Now, most deadlines are gonna be in the fall. Uh, the earliest deadline that you're gonna reach or see is October 15th um, by our National Association of College Admission Counseling. October 15th is by far the earliest you can, um, that you'll see an admission deadline. That's the earliest colleges um, can make a deadline. But you'll, you'll see November 1st and December 1st are often very um, common or typical deadlines. Next, it's gonna be your role to apply for scholarships and financial aid. And then finally, once you've made a decision on where you're attending, you're gonna submit an enrollment deposit to that college that you'll be attending. We'll talk a little bit more about your senior year timeline in just a minute. Now here is just kind of the college application process in a nutshell. We're taking all this information and we're paring it down into this one easy um, image for you. So first thing that you're gonna do in the college application process in your senior year, you're gonna to apply to college. And you might do that through the college's website or you might do it through the Common App or the Coalition App. And again, Mr. Doherty showed you earlier in Naviance how you can see if a college is Common App or whether you're gonna use the college application website. Next, you're gonna request your transcripts through Naviance in colleges I'm applying to. You have to request that your transcripts be sent to a college in order for them to receive it. So that's up to you to do that in the fall, and we'll go over that with you a little bit um, in more detail later on down the road. Next, you're gonna send your SAT and ACT scores directly to the colleges using either the College Board website account or your ACT account. But you wanna make sure that all of your test scores are getting to those colleges on time. And then finally, if you need one, you can request a letter of recommendation from either your counselor or maybe a teacher at least one month in advance of the college admission deadline. Now for letters of recommendation, not all colleges need them by any means. Many do not. So if you do need a letter of recommendation, just make sure that you're giving your counselor and your teachers plenty of time to write them. So next we're going to take a look at the timeline of your senior year. So this is kind of what you could expect for each month or a set of months throughout your senior year. So in August through December, that's really kind of the heavy college application time period for you. So like I mentioned earlier, most deadlines are going to be November 1st to maybe November 15th, December 1st, somewhere along there. And you're going to want to make sure that you confirm each college's admission deadline. But you're going to need to make sure that your application is in, that your transcripts have been requested, and that your SAT and ACT scores have been sent on time. So that's kind of that fall of your senior year. That's what you're going to be doing. 
October is when you're gonna be working on the FAFSA. October, November, December, actually through February. So the FAFSA is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. We have a whole other presentation on financial aid on our College Planning for Juniors website, so make sure that you check that out to learn more about the FAFSA and the financial aid process. But you're gonna to wanna to do that sometime between October and February. Next, in March and April, that's when you're gonna really be getting those financial aid packages from the colleges. And each college that you apply to, you'll get a financial aid package that will itemize everything that you can expect to receive, whether it's merit-based scholarships or need-based assistance, and you'll see what your out-of-pocket expenses will be. And you're, a lot of families really need to have that information before they make their final decision. Now, all year long, and this is why that band is in purple, all year, you have the opportunity to apply for scholarships. And our earliest scholarship comes actually in August of your senior year before school starts typically. So that's the earliest, but we have scholarships with deadlines that go all the way through the end of May. So you're gonna to wanna to check your scholarship list in Naviance on a regular basis to see if, you're, if there are any scholarships that you could apply for. Then finally, May 1 of your senior year. That is the National College Decision Date. So what that means is you really need to know where you want to go by May 1 of your senior year, and that's when you submit that enrollment deposit to tell that college that you plan on enrolling that that's where you want to attend. Now you can submit your enrollment deposit anytime after you've been accepted to a college, but you absolutely need to do it by May 1 in order to hold your place in that freshman class at that college. So that's your senior year right there. Now, just relax. I know we've thrown a lot of information at you here in a very short period of time. And there is a lot to this college application process. There really is. There's a lot of detail, a lot of deadlines, and a lot of stuff to know. But just know that we are here to help you. So your counselor here at the school is going to be a great resource for you. But you also want to take advantage of the college admission counselors. They are also amazing resources. Now, while we are here to help you through the process of applications, the college admission counselors are there to answer all of those very detailed questions about the specific colleges that you're applying to. So for instance, if you're applying to DePaul University, make sure you get to know that DePaul admission counselor. They're going to be able to tell you all about the admission decisions that they make, about scholarships, financial aid, specific academic programs, you name it. They're gonna be the ones that you wanna to get to know. Now, I'm not sure, maybe Mrs. Johnston mentioned this to you too, those admission counselors at those colleges are often the ones who are receiving your applications for admission and helping to make admission decisions. So get to know them because sometimes they're the ones who are taking your applications to the admission committee. Now, some other things that we're gonna be helping you do throughout your senior year. At the start of the senior year, we have a big group meeting, and so I will meet with all of my seniors and all the other counselors will meet with their respective seniors to kind of go over this process again. Then we'll do individual meetings with each and every senior. We spend about 20 to 30 minutes with each of you going over which colleges you're applying to and making sure that you have all of your um, T's crossed and your I's dotted and make sure you've got everything down for your checklist. We also have several application workshops and a special college planning website for your specific class. So make sure you're attending those workshops and getting additional help. And then again, advising throughout your senior year and um, junior year and senior year as needed. So anytime you've got a question, you can shoot us an email. Anytime you wanna sit down and talk with us, you're welcome to do that. Just sign up to see your counselor. We're here to help. We know that this is a big process, but we know that it's gonna be an exciting one for you. And so as you walk into um, the middle of your junior year and into your senior year, know that there are a lot of great things to come. It's gonna be a really exciting time and we're here to help.